In the previous part of this build, I modified the Hoff Moon handguard again to where I was finally happy with it. The chain link and both halves of the handguard were then welded up and we're ready to do a whole lot of cleanup work now. Look, you may not be lucky enough to own your own Dragon Slayer, but this is your opportunity to own a piece of one. Uh, two pieces of one, anyway. Honestly, I'm not even sure what you do with these things. They kind of look like bookends like this, but, you know, you'd need a shelf that could hold at least 50 pounds for the bookends themselves, never mind the books. Alternatively, you could always just forge, you know, 10 or 20 normal size swords from these chunks. Whatever works. Now the rules of this giveaway are simple. All you gotta do is go to my latest YouTube video, leave a comment using the word giveaway in some fashion, and you will be automatically entered for the drawing. At some point in the near future, I'll do a random drawing and some lucky weeb will get to win these massive hunks of steel. All right, that's all there is to it. Let's get back to the build. Okay, two hours later, I've got this thing strapped to the mill and it's all dialed in. So I've got a nice straight cut here. It was, uh, it was really tough because the blade is a little bit warped at this point from all the milling and welding and such. So, you know, getting this lined up and then when you clamp it, it kind of shifts a little bit. So you have to kind of overcompensate for the warp. Anyway, took forever, but here we are. I, I'm just going to machine off the weld here and then machine off the last half inch of the bevels on each side to sort of give it the impression that the handguard is hanging off in space, so to speak. Obviously have to continue these slots as well, so it's gonna be a fair amount of work. Oh yeah, I also have to make the hole and tap it for the handle, which is gonna be a challenge. The only problem with drilling this hole is I realized I haven't left enough room. You know, there's gonna to have to be a drill chuck hanging out of the spindle here, and then a drill is gonna be out like that far but the machine is already almost as far that way as it can go, so I'm not sure what I can really do because I can't shift the piece too much further. I guess if I put the whole thing up on blocks, I can get, you know, clearance for the handguard and I can move it over here, but that's going to be, you know, re-clamping, re-indicating everything back in. I'm still not sure if I'd even have enough room at that point because there's so much sword hanging off the end that it's going to be unbalanced and it could just topple off, which is going to make the whole clamping and dialing process much more dangerous and sketchy. So I, uh, I got some ideas. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so my goal here was to just skim the surface and get really close to, you know, flat. If you look over here, this is where the cutter basically stopped contacting this surface right about there. I don't know how easily you can tell that. You can see where the black oxide is worn off. So it wasn't touching here at all. So my piece is slightly misaligned, but if you look here, I mean, it is so close. It looks like a lot when you're looking at it from this direction, but I can barely feel that. It's probably, you know, ten thousandths of an inch. So I'm looking for weld defects. Doesn't look too bad, but I see a pinhole there and one there, for example. The, the bottom has quite a bit of undercut, but I think I'm going to need another pass before I decide whether that needs repair or not. There's just a little bit too much material left over. You can see some right there too, at the bottom of this. Maybe we'll take 15 thousandths, 20 thousandths. All right, taking a second pass here really helped clear things up. It actually looks pretty good. It's funny how different the weld color is. And you can see these spots, these are where the tack welds were initially before I did the full welds. 
it's exact same material, exact same welding process, but somehow the tack weld is a different color than the rest of the weld. Looking closely here, I don't have much cleanup to do. This is actually really good in my opinion. I see some little pinholes, another one there. There's some touch up to be done in the corners. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's almost a little crack, so to speak. It's more visible there. You can see that now. This is where I kind of tack welded the edges in, so it wasn't a perfect fusion. That one looks good. Up here, again, a tiny little bit, so maybe half a dozen things. I'll die grind those out. I'll TIG weld them in place, and then I'll make one more really slow final pass. And uh, I guess we'll call that part good. Oh, and quick note about the color. It really stands out now, but when I'm all done with the machining and I hand sand this in with, you know, whatever, hand sandpaper, rotary, orbital, something like that, it'll kind of blend the color back in. I think it's less about color than it is almost like a slightly different you know, reflection, it's slightly uh, shinier versus, you know, duller. I'm actually colorblind, so I could be completely wrong, but you'll see later on, it'll look a whole lot better. And in fact, I often can't even find my own welds after I have, you know, cleaned them up. All right, progress report. I have welded everything back up, and I made another pass, and I managed to fix most of the problems. You can see where the welds were. I think there was one there, one in this corner. They all look pretty good except that one, which is distinctly worse than it was before. And then that one, holy god, what the hell happened there? And long story short is I've actually ground these welds out and re-welded them four times so far. And I uh, keep making it worse, so there's some sort of contamination, probably on this one it's oil, there's probably a little bit of oil kind of seeped in the corner there, and I'm kind of just uh, burning it out I guess. This one, I'm not really sure. It is really weird, like it's a weld, but the edges of it are all funky, and there's something going on in the very center of it too. I keep grinding these out and re-welding these, and the end result is they get bigger because I'm grinding away more material every time. So technically I'm making this worse, but I assume at some point I'll get through the contamination and I'll fix it. Or I'm gonna have some really weird looking giant holes in my sword. Not a good situation. All right, round three or four or six or 20. But I've gotten this part all cleared up. You can see this is what it should look like. And then you come over here, and yeah, not really sure what to say. There's either a defect in the metal or something, because now I'm like way beyond where the original weld was, right? You can see the line. If I had some sort of impurity in there, it's one thing, but I'm up here and I'm still getting all kinds of fizzling and crap from the TIG welder. I'm now into this bevel up here so that should be fun to fix. I'll give it one more shot and then I don't know. I think I might even just hit it with the MIG welder. The MIG seems to care less about any sort of imperfections. I may be able to build that back up without too much problem. Alright, round 300,000 or so. We're about six hours into this, and I just keep making the problem worse, so we're gonna make it and hope for the best. Cross your fingers for me. Okay, got it all migged up. Looks extremely ugly, but it really can't be helped. I had to kind of build it up in stages, so it kind of looks like Quato from Total Recall. Open your mind. Anyway, you can actually kind of see, I don't want to touch it, but that part that's protruding the most is where it was most, you know, screwed up, I guess. But the, the tacks on the outside look better. So, I see lots of little pinholes. Some pinholes, I guess. Wait a minute, those aren't pinholes. They're actually, it's actually just slag on the surface. Okay, 
Let's just uh, give it a milling pass real quick. I got three minutes, so cross your fingers again. Okay, well, not the result I was hoping for. You can see there's still lots of pinholes in there, but we have effectively reduced the affected area by a lot. I mean, you can clearly see where I just welded and only maybe 20-25% of it is a problem. Uh, I'm gonna call it quits for tonight, but I'm gonna come back tomorrow, grind out this section right here, just this little bit, come back and MIG it again, and again, and again. And I think we might get there eventually. That is honestly crazy. I can only imagine that some oil or something got in there. I mean, I cleaned it so well before I actually started welding this, so I'd be really surprised. It is kind of interesting that it's like right below this welded spot. I don't know, maybe when I welded the heat kind of pushed oil out, you know, towards the edges and that's where it stayed and that's why it's causing such a problem, but we're getting there. Everything else turned out pretty okay. You can see this corner repaired successfully, so we just have the one part. And, uh, huh, I guess I'll try it tomorrow. Alright, it's now night number two. You can see I have re-welded this a bit. I was actually able to confer with the master himself, Michael Cthulhu, and he had a tip that I didn't think of, and basically that was, you know, with the defective area so deep, I had to carve out so much material that he suggested, you know, doing some tack welds just a few at the bottom, cleaning it thoroughly, you know, wire wheeling it, uh, cleaning it up with acetone and so forth, then doing a few more tacks, build it up a little bit more, so on and so forth until you get some sort of hideous monstrosity like this. The idea being, as I assume, to kind of clear out the contamination. You know, as you're welding, the contamination is kind of bubbling to the surface. In fact, you can generally see it. I can't really see it here because I think it's actually gone. You would basically see this kind of film on the surface, this kind of like almost powdery substance that was brought to the surface by the intense heat. And I think by trying to like weld over that, it was just kind of recontaminating the weld. That's the idea anyway. I'm not even sure if that's true at all, but this welding went much better. The more welding I did, the less contamination I saw. So hopefully the surface when I you know mill this back will be clean. Same thing with over here in that corner and down there in that corner. You can actually see that again looks like a pretty decent weld. So I kind of lost count, but I think this is the 11th runaround with grinding this out, rewelding it, remachining it, on and on and on and on. It has been incredibly lengthy. I think about seven hours because. Uh, to prep for the weld each time, I've got to cover every surface of the machine and everything nearby so I don't get spatter on it. I've got to spray the anti-spatter and everything. I got to clean the welds, you know, profusely, grind them out. I got to acetone them, on and on and on, trying to do this as perfect as possible. So every pass is actually a huge pain in the butt. But <sighs> come on, baby. Let's see how we did here. I don't see any pinholes. There's a little bit of a void right there. I think it actually got melted away from the weld. Not too worried about this because I'm going to take another full pass and kind of carve this down just a slight bit more. I think that'll disappear. How are we doing over here? Let me get the, uh, the light on the subject here. Uh, that's pretty good. I don't really see any real defects in there. The edges again, just a little bit, but I, I'm not too worried about that. Let's see this guy down there. More of the same. Uh, looks pretty good. <sighs> uh, I'm gonna take another, I don't know, 
10 or 15 thousandths of an inch off of this surface here and try to clean it all up. I'm just hoping I don't reveal any more problems that are slightly deeper under the surface. That would be hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Okay, update 379. We're looking pretty good here. This corner, nothing. That crack is gone. There's no defects whatsoever. Down here, this corner, nothing. Good to go. Up here, not gonna lie, still the tiniest bit. It's right there. You can see a few little wormholes but we got rid of 95% of it. But the problem is, as I suspected, is we're gonna start revealing other little tiny pinholes. We got a new one right there that wasn't there before. So, this is it. I'm gonna grind out that little bit, that little bit, weld it back up, one more pass, and then whatever happens, happens, because I'm just creating more problems for myself at this point. Plus, the more I mill off, the less semi-circular this piece gets, the smaller this bevel gets, and so on and so forth. So I'm just kind of creating larger problems that I cannot realistically fix. So one more attempt to get these things squared away, and that's it, I swear. End of story. All right, my friends. Well, I think we did it. Uh, I don't see anything. Not a single speck. Did I get rid of this little mark over here? I can't even see where it was. I think we are good. I don't see anything new revealed. Okay, just a little bit of fluff. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I'm throwing in the towel. I'm going to bed. Check out my, fl my reflection. The welds are so much shinier than the base metal. That's kind of weird looking. Anyway, I'm a little loopy. It's getting late and I would say we're about nine hours into just fixing those little tiny pinholes. So I'm done, throwing in the towel, sayonara, game over. Maybe tomorrow we'll get working on either these slots or milling away the edges here or both. <sighs> what a relief, I'm not gonna lie. That was incredibly stressful and incredibly frustrating, but I am extremely relieved to have that over and done with for now. You know, something that always kind of stands out to me is how rough things can look when you mill them. I mean, this looks ugly as can be, right? But it is actually perfectly smooth and perfectly flat, or about as close to it as you can get. It basically, I mean, it feels like glass. Perfectly smooth, no roughness or anything. It just looks really bad. So I'm thinking once I hand sand this a bit, it'll texture up and it'll kind of all match hopefully anyway all right since we've got this big face mill installed i'm just going to use it to trim back the blade the bevel portion hop in on either side of the guard here and then i'll change out the tool for something smaller to do the slots and other details and so forth The tripod just fell and landed directly in the middle and cutter. So, scratch one tripod. That could have been a lot worse. Luckily, I saved the camera. I just realized there's kind of a spot on the lens. I think uh, a spark got it. Can't really see it in here. Can you see it in the light, maybe? Not really sure where it is. There it is. I see it now. 
don't know how long that's been happening. Oh well, good thing I've got a whole stash of these things. This is pretty handy if you don't know about these. It says it's a UV protector, but it doesn't seem to affect the image at all, but it adds an extra layer of protection, and these things aren't like crazy expensive. I've actually ruined cameras from welding sparks and grinding sparks and such, so I always keep a stockpile on, on standby. Alright, new lens on, how's it look? Yeah, that's good. I don't see anything. You can see, you might be able to see. I can't really tell on the viewfinder, but you can possibly see some spots on there. I actually see a few in person. Hopefully, you know, the entirety of the previous footage doesn't have this giant spot on the lens, but what are you gonna do? By the way, this is my tripod set up on the mill. You can see how it easily fell off and landed right on the cutter. It's just me or that light look very halo-y. Hmm. Is this brand new lens dirty? Stand by. Alright, how did that look now? Uh, on the viewfinder, it's much clearer. I guess the lens had quite a bit of haze on it right from the factory. My viewfinder is pretty beat up though, so it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe I need a new camera. Who knows? Anyway, on with it. Okay, so we have gotten the majority of the milling done here. You can see we've got both slots here, and then we also milled away the blade on the edges. There's a lot of cleanup to be done, but we have a few more milling operations to do. Number one is we have to drill and tap a hole to mount the handle right in the center here, but there's also two circles, one on the other side of the handle, I'm not even sure what they're supposed to be. I'm not sure if it's ever explained in the manga. It may have been like two rods inserted to attach, you know, the guard to the blade, I guess. I'm not really sure, or that just could just be decorative elements, but regardless, we need to add them. Okay, we are ready to go here, drilling the hole for the handle. Now you'll notice I'm not using a drill chuck. I've actually got a collet chuck. Let's see if you can see this in here. So the collets are hollow, which means I can choke up on this drill bit, which, you know, puts most of the drill bit back here in the spindle. I'll do the same thing when I'm uh, making those little circles on the sides of the guard. You can kind of see how I had them laid out over there. This is what I'm going to use. I'll just stick it right in the collet. It's actually going to be a larger collet than this, but again, it'll give me just enough clearance. Only issue is going to be the tap, which is this guy, and you see it's pretty big. Uh, I'm gonna have to see how that goes, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. One last note, I'm really hoping I don't screw up here because this is the only drill bit I have in this size, and also I've never drilled a hole this way. I'm actually gonna have to feed the table into the drill bit to make this work. Normally you'd have a machine with like a quill, like a, like a drill press where you'd pull down on an arm and it'll, you know, extend to drill the hole, but this machine did not have that capability. The only machine that I have that has that capability is way too lightweight to handle a sword this big and heavy. Furthermore, it's got a vertical spindle, so it points down, which means it's basically impossible. The sword is too tall. I'd have to raise the milling machine up by like two or three feet, which is it's just not happening. So here we go, fingers crossed.
right, we got the hole drilled. We got it countersunk. It's time to put some threads in there. I'm gonna do this the stupid way, I guess. The goal here is I want to thread this hole perfectly straight so when I thread the handle on, it's not crooked, right? Now, the best way I've come up to do this is to just loosely hold this tap in this collet chuck. I don't know if you can see, yeah, I can, I can just turn it with my hands and I'm gonna feed it into that hole until it catches and it starts spinning. Then I'm gonna stop and I'll use a pipe wrench, this big boy. I'll use it to manually turn the tap uh, at least a couple turns or maybe even all the way, I guess. Uh, obviously this will damage the tap, but I have like 10 of these things and this is the cheapest, crappiest one. So I really don't care. By having it pretty tight, in this collet, it's gonna keep it straight while I'm, you know, pipe wrenching it into the hole. If it becomes a huge pain in the butt, I'll just stop once I'm a few threads deep and I'll do it later when it, the whole thing's off the mill. But, you know, once I have the thread started, then it'll continue straight, you know, it's not gonna veer off later on when I do it manually, so. Fingers crossed this works and it doesn't cause some sort of catastrophic damage. I guess uh, we're about to find out. Oh, a little side note. I just found something in this pile of chips. Um, uh, am I missing something here? Check that out. I literally drilled the bolt in half without even thinking of it. You can see where it came through. You know, it's right in the center line of the sword, of course. So that hole actually drilled right through the bottom of this bolt, or rather the middle of the bolt. Uh, <laughs> all that work and I just drilled it in half. So that means, I don't even know, what am I gonna do about that? I guess I'm gonna have to weld it into the bottom of the hole, I guess? Wow, I'll really have to think about that one later on. It's about one o'clock in the morning. And, uh, I don't know, incredible. Quick side note, but I'm actually kind of glad this happened in a way because I ended up just barely drilling all the way through the bolt so that it fell out. But if I had stopped that hole slightly short, it would have been fine until I tried to hang the sword from this chain link, probably later on in the video, and it probably would have broken and it probably would have landed on me. So I guess, count your blessings? Whew, that could have been incredibly dangerous. Unbelievable. All right, so I heard to be a real YouTuber, you gotta pimp your merch in every single video. So here we are. I paid a really excellent artist to make me some 80s inspired PHM designs, and she gave me four of them. I was gonna pick one, but honestly, I like them all. So here they are. I got this one right here. I've got this one as well. Very nice. I really like the color scheme on this one. But I think this one's my favorite. It's kind of got like Outrun slash Motley Crue vibes. Definitely right in my wheelhouse. Alright, that's it. See you in the next part.